have um, a big trustee standing here. Well, in the engineer there, so. Less than three minutes, we'll start right at 11. Uh, what are we, uh, Uganda would be? Oh my gosh, I don't even know. nine is, is <laughs> Spanish. Uh, 10 hours up. 10 hours from us? Yeah. Okay, so that's nine o'clock at night? Yes. Let's say good evening to those in Uganda now. Denise, what is protocol for speaking of coding with a silk mask on at all times? Where do you where do you guys feel the most comfortable? I mean, I'd like to probably have you in the camera, but. What would you like, Troy Allegra? Um, I, whatever people are comfortable with, maybe like within the camera and stuff would be good though. I can only feel restricted. Do you like Do you like this here? Or do you want it? It's fine. Okay. Just gonna maybe move it a little more towards you guys in the camera. Are we good, Gerard? Are we 11? Yeah, one Okay. To people all over the world, we say hello. Uh, for us this morning in Uganda, it would be the evening, but there are many people in many places that are suffering the loss of, uh, of Sharon Angela Hudson. And yet there's always joy associated with someone that has lived well amongst those that in this case she loved. Had a chance to, to meet Allegra and, and Troy and one of your cats. Uh, at the house and we talked just a bit about mom's goodness, but more importantly her small g greatness Because I believe greatness is defined as the right woman in the right place at the right time with the right people making a huge difference And that was of Sharon She was able to bless the people of two nations South Africa to begin with and then Canada uh, She left an indelible etch in the character of those fortunate enough to carry her memory and the choices she made were always focused and made towards Allegra and her success. 
So we come today to say thank you to God for her life and to be a part of a service of uh, remembrance and also again a committal service in which her ashes will be laid to rest. This is earth to earth and ashes to ashes and dust to dust. It is what we eventually become. But before all that takes place, we need to ask God to bless us. If you would bow your hearts and heads here and around the world, let us pray. Father, thank you for the day you've granted to us. Within our province, uh, the dryness of a winter's day. Be with us here on this earth, those that are suffering loss. Grant to our hearts peace and comfort in the face of tremendous loss and grief. With Sharon on the other side, we ask you to bless and keep her. Thank you that as she walked from this life to the next through the gates, she would have heard the sound of her Lord and Savior say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. And we ask you to grant her now peace and rest. Bless us this day, we pray. And thank you for the love that is found in Jesus, who gives us the opportunity to be eternal. Bless us this day, we pray. Amen. In all that we do, services such like this and gatherings that will follow, uh, three things will take place. Number one is that we are going to uh, always remember Sharon, uh, her beginnings, her journey, her story. Allegra in, in Troy, no pressure, but if you do have children, um, you're going to have to tell them the story of mom. You're going to have to, maybe with photos or a coffee table book that you can provide uh, or put pictures in online and they'll make you the book. You'll have to show a little one uh, the tremendous person that mom was. For within history, of course, we have those iconic individuals that we know of by name and also uh, by force of, of their life path that has blessed the lives of others. No different than mom. Her story needs to be kept. Uh, secondly, of course, when we gather and speak her name, we need to honor uh, the roles that she fulfilled as, uh, as daughter, a wife, mother, a niece, a cousin, so many different roles that she fulfilled. Uh, but she was also neighbor and friend, and that's important. Lastly, you need to celebrate the fact that, that we still have mom with us. Allegra, you're half your mom. Genetically, half of her, uh, you have characteristics, uh, personality that is a part of who mom was. And even though we lose Sharon in her entirety, we still have Allegra in which to, uh, to reach out and hold and, and to see with our eyes and to know that, that she still exists. Um, if there is then to be any other pro progeny, um, they'll be yours, they'll be hers. And I wanted to go back to the origination of, uh, of the first letter to the church written by Paul. I think it has to be the foundation for us gathering here today. Paul wrote to the church in Thessalonica. He wrote, Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Paul was stating to his audience that had questions concerning death and the life after, uh, do not be afraid. There's hope. Let us then act like those who have hope. The angelic message that first came to shepherds was what? Do not be afraid. And one of the most iconic verses that we use in times like this is John 14 in which Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me and my Father's house. Are many dwelling places? If it were not so, I would have told you. For behold, I go there to prepare a place for you. So Arnie, working here at the cemetery, a, a diligent, uh, hardworking man who loves the community, 
Uh, it always supplies uh, that gentle touch to every burial. We'll be coming in a few short moments and we'll be closing a place that has been prepared for mom. But we have to understand that millennia, before the ages were even created, God had in his heart and mind a place for mom. She will always be here as long as humanity is on this earth. Generations will be able to come and see the place where she's laid, including those that are in other countries unable to be with us because of the pandemic. Let us all have hope that the day will come when we will be able to put our arms around one another, that we will be able to travel once again to and fro, and that this place will be visited by those unable to be with us. Uh, for you that came this morning, thank you for being here, for supporting Allegra, Troy, one another, and then for celebrating the great life, which was Sharon's. My notes on her existence, very short in terms of just a simple conversation. I always think that, um, that I should maybe not be the one that shares just information. Um, but I do want to just touch on one thing. You mentioned that mom loved to see the world, uh, that she took her camera with her, that there were opportunities for her to experience the greatness of this planet and the different cultures and colors and races and creeds that are a part of what we know. And so I tip my hat to this one that came from one country to our country here in Canada, but yet was not bound by either country of birth or country of of place of, of work and, and home, that she saw other cultures. There is now for her, having seen a good portion of this planet, that opportunity to explore that which is on the other side. But before we send her off, Angela, a good friend and relative now through marriage, is going to come and share a few things of Sharon. Angela, thank you for doing this. Thank you. That was inspiring. <sighs> Thank you. So unfortunately, with what's going on in the world today, that we can't be all here together and share the stories. But each of us have a, has a chapter with Sharon that's very dear and precious to each of us. Unfortunately, we can't share them, so I can only share my, my view and my story. So, I met Sharon back in 1996 when our children were six years old, uh, grade one, and we met outside and we became friends instantly. And uh, we used to meet outside in the morning. And as life had it, we sort of separated. And what a joy it was when we were, were reunited again when our children fell in love and then got married. And oh my gosh, we're now family. And we enjoyed each other thoroughly because now we had futures and plans together. And we were looking forward to, oh my gosh, maybe they would have children. And, um, and now it's, it's, it's gone. And um, so um, my good friend had asked me, he said, I've never met her. Could you tell me about her? And so I said, the first thing is she's sweet. She's incredibly sweet and she's incredibly intelligent. And we would have very deep talks. And um, she would tell me stories about her life as she grew up in Africa and how she came to Canada and what it was like. And she's a strong woman, strong. So when you first meet her, you think that she's very gentle, but she was a strong woman. I mean, to be able to do that, to come to Canada, um, is amazing. And um, she's just sweet and she loved love. And so when someone would give her love, she would bounce it back right away. And so I'll give you an example about that, that happened just this year. So um, my mother wanted um, men's without knives and that was a, um, a food delivery service. And so Sharon had this food delivery service. And it said on there, did anyone refer you? And if so, they get $50. So right away I called up Sharon and I needed her email address. 
So I, I was ready for her because I knew exactly what she was going to do. So I phoned her up and I said, I need your email address, Sharon, and you're going to get $50 credit on your account. And right away she says, oh, Angela, that's wonderful. And she says, that's great. That's so kind of you. I'm going to give you the $50. And I laughed and I said, no, silly, you ain't doing that. You can't just give a gift back. You have to accept the $50. And so that is my Sharon. And so we laughed for a while and we talked about just life and how things are going. And she said, I'm not feeling very well. I said, I'm sorry to hear about that. And we said, take care of each other and I love you. And less than 24 hours later, she was gone. And scientifically, I know why. But emotionally, I can't make sense of it. And so, I'm going to share one more story with you. Um, ever since her passing, a phenomenon has been going on. And I see, I see hummingbirds everywhere. Not only in my backyard, but when I go to a park, when I go to someone's balcony, everywhere I go. And they're not just flying, but they sit beside me. And they're just right there in the tree, just sitting there. And they're chirping away. And hummingbirds are very strong and intelligent, and they're cheeky. They're cheeky like Sharon. And I know they're not Sharon. I know they're not Sharon. But they're also very delicate, and they're so full of sugar. And I think that if any animal in this world were to epitomize my friend, it would be a hummingbird. And so I embrace that. I embrace that, that that's a moment when I need to embrace my friend Sharon. So, to all of you, I'm not saying go out and look for hummingbirds because, well, that's not Sharon and, and that's my trigger. But if, if any of you are, are feeling in pain, um, just accept whatever trigger and, and embrace it because she's, she's a precious person. Um, so... I know, I know Sharon is around in my heart and I don't know if she's listening to me and I like to think that she is. So because we're not here to talk together, um, I do want to say to her that I want to thank you for the chapters that you gave in my life. You've been a wonderful person, you've been a wonderful friend, you've given so much love You've been a wonderful daughter, granddaughter, sister, niece, partner, friend to not only people you know, but strangers. And you've been an amazing mother. I've told you so many times what an amazing daughter you have, and you've loved my son unconditionally. And I want to thank you for making this a better world, sweetheart. I want to thank you for all the chapters you gave in my life. And you're always in my heart and you always have a place at my table. Thank you, sweetheart. You're precious. Thank you. Thank you, Angela. I never thought of humming hummingbirds in that way. Um, sweet. But they would be the sweetest bird out there. Nicely done. The Psalmist David <clears throat> writes a psalm of comfort. He writes a psalm that describes being alone, but never being alone, and uh, it's a psalm of transport from, again, this life to the next. And he wrote, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures, leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul, guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod. 
your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That goodness and mercy, Angela, was described by you as sweetness. And it followed her all the days of her life, and now it rests upon the shoulders of daughter Allegra, uh, son-in-law Troy, friends that knew her well. Um, the way to get rid of the burden of loss is to take some of that goodness and mercy and begin to pass it to others. But for a time, as again Angela mentioned, <clears throat> for a time you need to just feel the burden. You can't give the $50 back immediately, right? You have to hold on to it for a bit, accept it, but then you can pass it to others. What we do in the next few moments then is we have a chance to say goodbye. We have a chance to be recognized as those close to her. We have a chance to recognize our role in representing thousands of others that knew her along the way. So I'm going to move the mic stand just a little bit to my right, left to the camera. In order for us to come and just, we're going to do a simple walk around, it's called the Line of Legacy. If you wish to place a hand on the urn, if you wish to just spend a, a quick moment to say goodbye, please do so. We will be representing, again, hundreds that might have been able to come had not the pandemic limited our numbers. So if you are representing others, just allow a moment by yourself here to say goodbye. Once that's done, Allegra, we're going to have you place mom, place those iconic items that will stay with her, and then I'll just say a few short words in close. We'll start with you, Allegra, if you wish to come. Thank you. Thank you for just coming and, and spending a, a quiet moment, allowing soul to connect one more time with soul. And mankind has been doing this sort of service now for 6,000, uh, 620 years, according to an Egypt, uh, Egyptian exhibition in the Louvre. There was a casket, uh, a few tools to prepare the body, uh, a tablet about the size of my Bible, maybe a bit bigger, with stamped letters uh, that described a process, 4600 BCE. So for 6,600 years we've done this. And there is within Scripture a number of references to the eternal, the eternalness of God, eternity, encapsulated in love. Uh, again, Angela, thank you for sharing that Sharon loved love. That was nice. 
And so the greatest love that we have, of course, is to love God and love our neighbor. That is what this whole book can be summed up as. And it's incremental in terms of our goodness to one another. It has to be daily. And so Matthew 6, the Lord's Prayer, or the Our Father, states in its opening, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. If a body that you knew and recognized with soul in that framework, if that body can be reduced to ash, if that ash can be placed in a beautiful urn, then we have to believe that God's power, His glory, forever and ever can bring that back to that which we know. In the interim between her burial and that which will be her risen with Savior and Lord, in the interim we need to have hope. Hope that uh, those that knew and loved her will see her again. For I believe strongly that that is true. Until then, this day, may God grant to you, Allegra and Troy, the strength. May God grant to those that joined us, whether near or far, the strength to make this day. Allegra, we're going to have you come and place Mom in the niche opening with the iconic items. And for the rest of us then, just a moment to wait until that process is completed. I'll end my time with you with just a simple refrain from a hymn that I loved as a boy. Sitting on my grandfather's knee in a very small farm church up north in British Columbia, this was my grandfather's favorite hymn. The words are, For I know whom I have believed in, and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. There is faith and hope. There is joy and love and peace attached to loss if we are willing to be held in the hollow of God's hand. Allegra, Troy, may God bless and keep you, make his face to shine upon you and give you his peace. Allegra, may God give you decades upon this earth that you might be able to tell the wonderful story of your mom to generations. To those that came to support this couple, thank you and a blessing to you. And to those that came from far away to join us with technology that is new to us but would be impossible to the ancients, thank you for being with us. God bless you throughout his wonderful world and universe. A blessing to all today. Amen. <laughs>